Hi everyone, Travis Bradbury here from Masterpoint Rope Access Solutions and Marlowe Rope. Welcome back to another Tech Tip Tuesday and I apologize for being gone for so long. Uh, we've had a busy couple of months at Masterpoint, which is great, but uh, this week's Tech Tip is a very interesting one, one that um, is spawned from something that occurred to me. So the Tech Tip is to never assume and always inspect other people's knots and then we're gonna talk about a couple of ways that are techie in which we can ensure safety uh, moving forward. But what happened to me was on my uh, level three recert a couple of weeks ago, uh, for the fourth time certing up, I had a knot blow on me, okay? So what I was doing was I had opted to do a knot pass rescue with a victim uh, after the classic a uh, whole group of SPRAT class uh, personnel went and did their knot passes. The person that went up a set of lines, tied their alpine butterfly midline knots, um, stayed above them after their whole drill, and uh, I went to go get them. Now, one, the first mistake was not looking at those knots to make sure they were correct alpine butterflies. If they were or weren't, I won't really ever know. Uh, so what happened was I went up the lines, Past the knots, caption with the victim, we're coming down, okay? Uh, we're coming down on a main line with this one being our safety. And I get to my knot, and I had already previously moved the midline knot on the safety up, okay? Now, typically, just because it's the way I always have done it, if I need to move a midline knot, and this is in training, because I've never done a knot pass rescue in real life ever. Uh, so, you know, you can move the line or the knot, you can introduce more into it in order to move the alpine butterfly uh, up or down a rope. Now, the key, the key is to keep the damaged section isolated, okay? You don't want to introduce that into the line. So once I did that, um, I established my second descender and I was then going to make a rope to rope transfer, okay? Uh, onto this descender so that we could continue down. So I've got my backup that I've moved down below this knot coming off of this descender onto this and once all of the load was on this we fell a foot and a half I think. It was about a foot and a half. Uh, came to a stop just above the crash pad. ASAP never locked up or engaged uh, but nonetheless it was a quick shock and of course I look up. I don't see a midline knot and it's very obvious what happened. So we descend, I fail, now I'm scratching my head and I'm in total marinade mode. So I'm marinating on this, wondering how could that have happened? Um, so there's two possible ways that it happened. And one is that the technician that did the first skill set of tying midline knots and doing the passes maybe tied an incorrect um, alpine butterfly. Um, or the other option is that maybe when I was doing this, um, somehow this loop got pulled back through here. I don't know how that happened. That's a possibility because if this does happen, you now have a slip knot, okay? So that's very possible that that happened. Uh, I'll never know. Um, but one of the tips is to, in order to alleviate this, is to simply take that alpine butterfly and start a whole new alpine butterfly with it, okay? Because if I do that, then I know I'm tying the alpine butterfly the way I feel it should be tied. Um, and I'm ensuring that the damage is still isolated. So by simply tying a butterfly into another alpine butterfly, I could take that all out of the equation. Um, so a couple of those tech tips. One, as a veteran, I'm I'm, I'll be the first to admit it. I don't know how many of you out there would admit it, but when we're in a class getting our certifications recertified, we're pretty hyper-focused at making sure we do everything right, and we're not paying attention to the surroundings. Uh, maybe someone else's midline knot or someone else's uh, during the rescue. Um, so that's one of the tips is to, is to definitely not get complacent like I did and not make sure that that was an alpine butterfly. I just assumed. Um, and second, a good tip would be to, in order to alleviate that, if it were incorrect, tie an alpine butterfly into another alpine butterfly and you've moved your knot and you've successfully made sure that it is a proper alpine butterfly. 
Um, so that's what happened to me, and it's the first time it's ever happened to me. And um, I've been hearing a lot more stories over the weeks after talking to friends about the scenario. And they've been having uh, technicians that they work around tie their alpine butterflies in a very peculiar way that I've come to find out is a dragonfly. Uh, we all know that when you do the twist method, either the hand wrap or the twist method, if you twist once, you have to twist the same way you twisted the first time. Um, these guys have been seeing people twist it the other way, but they maintain that whole, you know, body, torso, leg thing, and then they do their alpine, and it's not an alpine butterfly. Um, so a properly alpine, but a properly tied alpine butterfly knot should have some key characteristics, which I'll show you right here when we get the camera close up. All right, so you can see, uh, here in this video, how at first glance, one would think that these are the same knot. Um, especially when you're on rope, climbing up to them and right past them. Uh, you just come up to them and you can see, possibly, maybe, I don't know, at first glance. Um, we have these two crossover pieces trapping the vertical loads going both ways as well as these two, okay? These are parallel, these are not. But then when you turn these knots over, here's where we really start to get um, a better view of just how um, one is correct and the other is not. So in both of these ropes, the Alpine loop is facing the left. And if you look at our ropes that are trapping the vertical line. This one over here, we have the rope that's coming out of the alpine loop, going around the rope, straight back down and into here. Whereas this one, we have it going out, the alpine loop is coming out here, around the rope, and then straight down on the outside. Um, so under a heavy load, this bite is essentially a slip knot, okay? You can see how if this were 400 pounds right here, you could conceivably get this thing, and this is how I feel like maybe it went for me on Friday, uh, but essentially that'll just pop right out. It's a slip knot, okay? Versus this one here. Um, because this strand is coming up, coming right down over on the inside of this one, so they're trapping each other, all right? They're keeping each other from, and constricting down on each other uh, from this moving. You know, this is a tri-loading knot. It's meant to be loaded that way, that way, and that way, if this is not a damaged section. So that was the classic example of you get the loops twisted in two different directions and create your alpine butterfly that on quick inspection glance, you've got, oh yeah, okay, parallel ropes, trap, trap, ropes kind of looking parallel but aren't, trap, trap, but either way, see it's there that they're parallel. And on the other side, there's a cross. So there's quite a few reasons why I'm making this video. One, um, to demonstrate a tech tip on the Alpine butterfly passing of knots, right? Uh, two, to raise awareness about um, making sure it's the right alpine butterfly. I think uh, another thing I like to take away from this is if you think you're going to be doing a rescue, uh, bring another set of ropes um, and get rid of the knot pass. Um, you know, our level ones are doing um, rescues from adjacent set of ropes, and this is all that whole pre planning thing. So, those are the uh, that's the thing I wanted to talk about. Those are the topics on this alpine butterfly, um, and of course, this happening to me makes it uh, much more fresh uh, to think about. So I think it's something we should all think about. Thanks.